What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Jay, back again for another video on Real Sports Talk. And the draft, the first round of the draft has just concluded, the NFL draft. And there has been some, this was a crazy day for the draft. I mean, we got trade backs, you know, we got trade ups, you know, we got, you know, quarterbacks, you know, coming, teams coming from the 20s to go up to the 10s, teams dropping down from the 10s to the 12s. You know, players falling in a draft all the way down to the second round that we thought was going to be bona fide first round picks. I just think it was a crazy draft, but it's some picks that stood out to me that I kind of wanted to, you know, give my opinion on, give my breakdown on, you know, that intrigued me in this draft. So I want to go ahead and get into that and talk about some of my most intriguing picks in this NFL draft. All right, the first player I want to talk about is uh, Cal Pitts, you know, the receiver slash tight end out of Florida. I mean, the offensive weapon that Cal Pitts is. Cal Pitts is a monster. Cal Pitts is a dog. You know, I was hoping and praying that the Cowboys was going to get Cal Pitts, but unfortunately, we weren't able to, you know, and it was a little hurtful. You know what I'm saying? Because Cal Pitts is just that much of a monster. You know, a lot of people want to compare him to Darren Waller. A lot of people want to compare him, you know, to Travis Kelsey, Jordan Kittle. He, in my opinion, is a one-of-a-kind type of player. Um, he's a tight end who you need receiver to guard him and I'm not just talking about a regular to the mill receiver I think you need number one corners to guard Cal Pitts and I think a lot of people in Atlanta was talking about moving Julio Jones keep Julio Jones on that team because let me tell you Julio Jones Cal Pitts and, and Calvin really are going to scare a lot of teams because Calvin really has already had already had a great 2021 season he kind of came into his own as a number one wide receiver caliber player uh you get Julio Jones back who you know while he is aging he's dealt with some injuries is in my opinion when healthy one of the top five receivers in the game and in my opinion when he's at his best he is the best receiver in this game and then you go and add a guy like Cal Pitts just a monster you know he did you know people have compared to Calvin Johnson people have said he's going to be the LeBron James of tight ends now I don't know if I would go that far but I think he's going to be an amazing player I think he's going to be a Hall of Fame player and I think he'll be a mismatch for any team that he plays up against especially with those two guys I mean you 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 just talk about an offense where if they can add a running back that you know just you know a really good running back that can run the ball maybe 15 times a game and get you them 100 yards, get you 90 yards, or even be like a dual threat type of guy, I think that offense is ready to go. I mean, obviously, it still has some holes on the offensive line. Obviously, you know, you got to see what you can get out of Matt Ryan at, you know, his age because, you know, he's not getting any younger. You know, you got to hope defense get better, but this offense is going to be must-see TV, in my opinion, because you already had a monster in Julio Jones, and now you had another monster in uh, Cal Pitts, and then you add that with a guy like Calvin Ridley. I mean, I just feel like the Falcons are going to be a fun team to watch, and I think it was a great pick for Atlanta, man, because they just get a just they just get another Julio type of player where he's big, he's bigger than everybody, he's faster than everybody. So I think Cal Pitts was a great pick for the Falcons, and it, it was one that really kind of shocked me, and I think the Falcons are going to be a really good offense this year. Moving on. With my next player, I'm going to be talking about quarterback Justin Fields, arguably my quarterback won the draft. Yeah, I said it is what it is. I don't take it back. Uh, Justin Fields is one of my favorite quarterbacks in this draft. He's one of my favorite quarterbacks to come out of the draft in a really long time. I mean, you just talk about a guy who's tough, a guy that can run the football, a guy that can throw the football, and, you know, with accuracy, can throw the ball deep. You know, he can do pretty much whatever you need him to do. He's probably not going to make that flashy pass. He's probably not going to be a Patrick Mahomes type of player. But if you look at a guy like Dad Prescott, who I really like, especially as a Cowboy fan, who's a guy that can just get his team to W, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, it, Justin Fields and Dak Prescott are very similar players. If you talk about a tough quarterback, they both showed it. You know, if you talk about a resilient player, they both showed it. If you talk about win at all costs, they both showed it. If you talk about a guy who, you know, he's not as flashy as the other guys, but he gets the job done, they both showed it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and even, you know, sadly enough, when it comes to champions, that neither one of them are. But at the same time, they're great players. You know what I'm saying? And they can elevate any team, you know. And I feel like Chicago got a great quarterback in Justin Fields. If anybody's going to go to Chicago and turn that culture around, I guarantee you it's going to be Justin Fields. I would not write off Chicago. A lot of people want to talk about how, you know, how sorry they are or whatnot. But let's not forget that this is a team that well, a couple years ago was 12-4 and four and one of the top teams in the league. Um, you know, just a year ago was a playoff team. You know what I'm saying? And... It kind of, you know, for the most part of that game, stayed with the Saints. And that was with Mr. Trubisky at quarterback. And I never thought Mr. Trubisky was good. And I definitely don't think that he's going to be better than what Justin Fields is. I think Justin Fields is going to be better than Mr. Trubisky this year. I think that's how good, you know, 
Justin Fields is. I just feel like he's going to be able to come into that offense, command the offense. Him and David Montgomery is going to, you know, be a nice little pair, you know, as a guy that can, you know, run the ball in the backfield and also can catch the ball. You know, just a solid player. You look at a guy like Allen Robinson. I mean, Allen Robinson got to be jumping for joy right now. You know, getting a quarterback that's going to be reliable, getting a quarterback that's going to get him the ball, that's going to look for him, you know, in the ball game and going to treat him like a number one receiver. You know, you're just going to see a lot a lot more out of this team with a guy like Justin Field because I'm telling you guys, he is a natural-born leader. He is a natural-born winner. That is a guy who you want on your football team, and he is definitely a Chicago Bear type of player, just a tough, gritty type of player that's gonna do whatever it takes to get a dub and i really like this pick for chicago because i feel like this was the perfect quarterback and i will be bold enough to say this was the best quarterback they could have got for their team in this draft moving on okay so the next guy on the list is michael parsons uh linebacker out of penn state got drafted by my dallas cowboys uh, when when michael parsons was first to pick i was kind of a little bit confused um, even though Michael Parsons is a great linebacker and I want to get more into that, you know, Rashawn Slater was on the board and that was my, that was the guy I wanted, you know, just to build the offensive line because I believe that this offensive line, you know, has dealt with some injuries, is getting older, but hopefully, you know, people, you know, people in the front office are saying that it's healthy, so hopefully it can be healthy, but I think the Dallas Cowboys got an absolutely great player with amazing upside in Michael Parsons. Uh, while he isn't the most pro-ready linebacker in this draft class, I would say that's more of a Wusu Koromoa. I would say that's more of a, you know, Nick Bolton. Maybe even the Zayvon Collins who went to the uh, Cardinals, I believe. I think he's a, you know, he has more upside than any of them. He more he has more raw athleticism and ability than any of them. I think he hits harder than any of those guys. I think, you know, he, he can hit and run better than any of those guys. He's probably the best blister among all of those guys. And why he does struggle in coverage and why, you know, his diagnosis is not as great as, you know, the other guys, I think he... He's just raw, man. He can develop into something so great because if he gets under the right coach, a coach like Dan Quinn, who's known for, you know, coaching great talent. I mean, you go back to his Seattle Seahawks days, being able to coach guys like, um, I believe, K.J. Wright, uh, you know, you look at guys like Bobby Wagner. He was able to coach guys like Brandon Browner, who was a CFL player. He, he turned into a really good corner. He ended up coaching a fifth rounder in Richard Sherman, who, in my opinion, is one of the best corners of my decade, <laughs> of my generation, you know, growing up. So I think Dan Quinn knows how to, you know, develop players and, you know, get the best out of talented players. You know, even some of the players that came, you know, out of the Falcons, Grady Jerry, um, Deion Jones, you know what I mean? Um, you know, you know, so I believe that Dan Quinn can make something really good out of a guy like Michael Parsons. I mean, he just has the skill set. You know, you just see it when you watch him. Just raw in raw athleticism, raw power, raw strength, you know, and that's the thing about him. He's only been playing linebacker for a couple years. So he's only going to get better and better and better. And that's what's scary. He hasn't touch his potential and that's what and that's the crazy part while some of these other guys have been playing linebacker for their entire careers and still isn't as great as he is in certain aspects this guy's only been playing for two years and he was a defensive end so to think about what he can be is just amazing for the cowboys and why he does have his concerns i believe with the right coach which i believe the cowboys finally do have the right defensive coach and dan quinn i believe michael parson can be a star in this league an absolute monster in this league you know a guy that can just hit and run Run, find the ball, get ball, see ball, go get ball, make plays, make that boom behind the line, stop the running back, really improve uh, a, a Cowboys run defense that was terrible last year. You know what I'm saying? And I just think it was a great addition to the Cowboys defense. And it was a very much needed addition to the linebacker room, especially with the injuries, you know, that the Cowboys have been dealing with, with LVE and, you know, the regression of Jalen Smith from that 2019 18 football season so I, I think it was just a great pick overall for Dallas and I think it's gonna you know really work out for us moving on uh the next guy on my list is Kayla Farley man Kayla Farley to the Tennessee Titans was a very interesting move you know I was talking to some Titans fans especially my brother and you know he was just talking about how you know they wanted a guy like an Elijah Moore to help out that offense and you know very you know replace Corey Davis and compliment AJ Brown and the rest of those guys on that offense you know what I mean? But Kayla Farley is a really good addition to a Titan secondary who, as of right now, best corners are Christian Fulton, a rookie that barely played last year, a second-round pick that, in my opinion, was not a great player coming out of college, and Janoris Jenkins, a guy who had some of his best years 
put behind him a couple years ago and isn't really as good as he once was. So I think it was definitely a position where they definitely needed some players. And, you know, while, you know, you could have went with a guy like Greg Newsom, who's a little, who's, you doesn't have, you don't have them same injury concerns and you, and he's a little bit more of a finished product. I think Caleb Farley is probably one of the highest upside guys in this draft. You know, just like what I was talking about with Michael Parsons, just a raw player. I mean, why he's not as much of a finished product as the other guys, why he doesn't cover as well as a Sertan or, or, or uh, a J.C. Horn. He, he, you know, his catch point isn't as good. You know, his um, his tackling and all that good stuff isn't as good. You know, his, you know, dealing with route runners, dealing with speedy receivers isn't as good as those top guys. But he has that raw athleticism, and they're four to speed in a 6'2", you know, 208-pound corner like that's just amazing speed and ability for a guy that big you know what i mean so he's just a raw athlete and i believe that if he can develop himself into a corner and he can stay healthy which i know a lot of people hate hearing because we heard that a lot with the if he can stay healthy type players but if he can stay healthy and he can develop as a corner this man will be one of the best corners we've probably ever seen in the national football league if he can develop into a really good corner you know what i mean and that's going to be a challenge not only for himself but for the titans to get the best out of him and to keep him healthy because his raw skill set is amazing. I mean, you watch games like the game he had against Miami where he was just getting beat but still being able to catch up and, and basically run in front of the receiver on the receiver's route and get an interception. Like his speed, his ability, you know, his athleticism is just ridiculous. And I believe he can be a top corner if he can develop as a corner and he can stay healthy in his league. So I think it was a, a risky pick by the Titans, but I think it's a, you know, high risk but a higher reward for them if they can get the best out of Caleb Farley. Moving on. With the next player uh, on my list, I want to talk about Greg Rousseau getting picked 30th overall to the Buffalo Bills. Um, first off with this pick. Like, seriously, make it make sense, uh, Bills fans, Bills Mafia. I don't understand it. I mean, you're talking about a player where, yes, you know, Russo has that raw ability. I guess you could say that raw. And I guess, you know, people can use it against me. Well, you said Caleb Farley can be great, and he's raw. Well, you said Michael Parsons can be great, and he's raw. See, it's the difference between two types of raw in life, okay? Greg Russo is 6'7", 2 whatever, 60 or something. So... Trying to be an edge rusher. First of all, he's not an edge rusher. Greg Rousseau makes no plays on the edge. This man only knows how to do two things. Stunts and push himself into a sack. Like, I literally watched this man play, and all I saw for the most part was him eating beaten up on a sorry lineman with bad hand placement and just running past him or pushing his way into a guy and then the quarterback running forward and then he getting ahead of him. That is the only time you see this man get stats. Stunts, and when the quarterback down there runs in front of him and he disengages with a blocker and gets a sack. Greg Rousseau to me is not a first round pick. Greg Rousseau isn't even a second or third round pick. He is a fourth or fifth round pick project at best. And yes, people can say, well, Josh, he had 15.5 sacks. That's fine. But guess who else had 15 or more sacks in college? George Selvey, Jalen Ferguson, Carl Nassau. You want to know what? You know what's in common with all those guys I just named? They are sorry. You do not hear about those people in this league. Carl Nassau was like cool for like a couple years, and I haven't heard from Carl Nassau. And even besides Carl Nassau, I only heard from George Selvey because the man played for the Cowboys. He had like a good season. But after that, the man had like one sack a season. Trash. You look at Jalen Ferguson, he was had like 15 or some sacks, and, you know, with the Ravens, and he hasn't done anything for them in the sack production. So just because he had the numbers doesn't mean that his game will translate, that the sacks will translate, because he's not going to be able to just push around tackles and guard at the next level at a high rate. He won't be that guy. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, why would the Bills take that guy? And I knew he was going to go in the first round because I knew somebody was going to look at his size and say, yeah, man, look at what he can do. He had 15 sacks. But I'm telling you, this was a terrible pick 
by the Bills. Greg Rousseau is nothing more than a project player that you could possibly see where he can do a defensive tackle because he does have raw strength, but he doesn't he doesn't rush with a plan. He doesn't really have pass rush moves, and I don't believe he knows how to play the edge at all. I think he's a defensive tackle at best, and he's a defensive tackle that you have to scheme into being dominant. He's not a defensive tackle that's going to be able to flourish in any system. He's going to have to flourish around a great defense that's going to play him in spots where he knows how to be successful. And even then, he's not going to put up this type of production in the NFL. So I think it was just a waste of a pick by the Bills, even though they're a great team, and they're going to be good either either way. I just think that they took an L on this one. They probably should have just took one of the UNC running backs and moved on with their life because Greg Russo is going to be a bust at the next level, and that's just being honest, unless a coach can scheme his way into making Greg Russo a, a stunting defensive tackle or something like that and putting them in favorable matchups against, you know, weaker players. And that's pretty much going to wrap up my list of, you know, some of the more intriguing players that, you know, uh, were drafted tonight and, you know, how they are going to affect, you know, or in Greg Russo's fit, not affect their team at all. Um, so, you know, like I said, I believe all these players can be good except for Greg Russo. Um, no disrespect, but all disrespect intended. Um, but, you know, for the guys that I do think can be good, I just think that a lot of these guys just need to be coached up. You know, you look at a guy like Parsons, if he's coached up, he can be a great player. And a guy like Farley, same thing. You know, and I don't just mean this like they're sorry players and they're just athletes like a guy like Jason Oway, you know, where, you know, they can just be coached up and they'll be great. No, Jason Oway can get coached up and I still don't think he's going to be a great player. I think Parsons has already dominated college football without being a very, while being a raw player. I think Caleb Farley has dominated a little bit of his, you know, in his conference, college football, while being a raw player. So I'm talking about guys who were dominant in college, you know what I mean, you know, on tape, while still being particularly raw players. I believe when you get those, if you get those players and you can, you know, develop them so their skills can translate at that next level and they can develop. Um, and they already got that raw strength, that raw, you know, speed and whatnot. I believe those players can become great. You know what I mean? I feel like they're really going to help out those teams if they can be taught right. And then you look at guys like Justin Fields, too, where, like, he's going to really change a culture down there in Chicago and help that team out for the better. Uh, and, you know, other prospects, man. So I, I really was interested, you know, with the guys that I was talking about coming into the draft. You know, and I believe all these guys are going to have their own impact. Obviously, it's tough for Greg Russo in this league, and I think it's going to be fun to see all of them, you know, once they do, you know, develop and become players. And even starting off in their careers, I think all these guys are going to be fun to see, except for one of them. And that's pretty much all I got to say about it. Y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comment section. Unless you're a Bill fan, you can get mad all you want to. I will not fight that good fight with you. I'll just tell you to go watch film. That's all. Peace.